is I'm going to be removing the wheel, removing all the damaged parts, and then we'll see exactly how many parts we need to buy to get this vehicle back up to standard. And hopefully when I strip this car down, I don't find too much crazy hidden damage. So as you can see, the wheel's actually got a buckle on it, so I need to see if I can get this repaired. I've got a damaged drop link. I've got a damaged um, suspension strut here. And also the tie rod end is completely snapped here on the steering rack. So what I need to do is get all these parts removed and then I'll start on the bodywork. Here I'm starting by removing the 18mm nut and bolt on the bottom of the suspension strut and then I'm going on to remove the speed sensor and the other cables that are there. And it's just a case of placing everything out of the way so that it doesn't get damaged in any way. And now what I'm doing is I'm removing the drop link attachment on the sway bar. So that's it there. You've got your Allen bolt. So you've got your Allen key here on the bolt. And then your nut's just a 16mm nut. Just screws on like so. And that's the same again with your tie rod end here. It's onto this ball joint at the end of the tie rod. Same again with the Allen key and this time it's a 18mm. What I'll do now is just use the ball joint separator. Now that just goes in between the ball joint and the knuckle, or the hub, whatever you want to call it. Now just loosen it off, and here she comes, because nothing's bust. And I'll just um, loosen this, loosen this, this uh, bolt off here. As you can see, the bulb joint's in actually good condition. I'll split the hub from the shock absorber. And I'm just placing the bungee cord around the hub and securing it just so that it doesn't fall away and get damaged in any way. What you do now is remove this rubber boot here and then unscrew the tie rod end there. So there's a circlip in the back here. I just need to get that off and then I should be able to remove the, the rubber boot. And it's just a case of pulling the rubber boot towards you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this inner tie rod end. So I'll use this little tool that I picked up. So pretty much that will go in here. Then I'll tighten, tighten up the nuts 
and then I'll use a 3 8, 3 8 inch drive on the square hole here and then just turn it anti-clockwise and then this should come out. Right, so I'll put the tool on. Okay, so it's just a case of fitting the clamp over the inner tie rod end the nut, then tighten up the two 10mm nuts on the tool, clamp everything up, and then away you go. What I'll do now is I'll just place the 38 drive with a half inch extension bar on. Then we'll go anti-clockwise. There you go. Now I just need to release the, the nuts on the tool. And then remove the inner thyroid. There you go. This is a new one here. So what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of um, Loctite on the end of this thread just because it's the steering and I don't want that to loosen in any way. What I'll need to do now is remove this 17mm bolt which holds the inner tie rod end into the outer tie rod end. So I'll really sat now. Now what I'll need to do is I'll need to get a measurement of, I know it's slightly bent, but if I can get a rough measurement of this and then make the new one the similar size, that'll give me a sort of good steering until I manage to get down to the wheel alignment centre. A little bit of Loctite. And then again we just need to use the tool Now I'll tighten everything up to talk. Now what I need to do is fit this protective cover and also this sort of clip here which goes on the end holds everything in place. Okay so this just pushes over What we need to do is just clamp on this part here that's protruding up. We just need to crush that, the two ends together. And then what that does is it tightens this clip onto the rubber boot here. And then it stops the, the rain or the water getting in or any dust or anything like that. Now it's just a case of tightening up the 17 millimeter nut. Tighten 
Time to remove the suspension strut. So there's three 13mm nuts holding the suspension strut onto the top of the suspension turret. Right, and as you can see there, the shock absorber's been damaged here and it's not straight anymore. So I need to change it. First of all, what we'll need to do is we'll need to put some spring clamps on the spring to remove the tension. Then we can gain access to the, the nut that's inside here on the cup. And then once we loosen that off, everything will be able to come off. So this is the spring compressor, spring clamp. All we do is we turn this nut, this clamps in like so, crushes on the spring and takes the tension off the spring. As you can see, it's took quite a lot of the tension out of the spring here, so now it should be a lot easier to remove the crown here at the top. So we just need access into the top here. This gives us access to this nut here, which is a 21 mil. And then we've got a six millimetre Allen key. So what that does is, because obviously if we try and turn that, the whole thing will spin, the actual piston, the tube, if you like, off the suspension will just keep turning. So we just hold that in place while we turn the nut. And once you've got it loosened off, it should be able to come out now. Like so. You can actually see the, the bearings in there. So obviously if you were turning that and it was grinding, making a crunching noise, this would need to be replaced, but that's all good. And that's where your spring sits here, this indentation part here. So you just make sure when you're putting it onto the new suspension strut that this part of the spring goes in here. And that's your rubber bump stops. So what that does, it stops the suspension bottoming out. So if you ever hit a really big pothole or well, you've got a lot of weight inside the car, if this comes up and down, what you don't want to happen is the spring, the suspension to bottom out. So this actually stops, it gives it a bit of cushioning here. And that's the spring removed. The other thing we need to do is remove this rubber because if we forget to fit that, what will happen is the spring will sit directly on top of this metal part here and it will vibrate and it will make a lot of noise every time we go over bumps so it's imperative that we refit this. As you can see there's been quite a good bit of impact. It's been absolutely whacked here with the wheel as well as being bent out of shape. And then this doesn't even move. So this is the shock absorber that I picked up. So all I need to do now is just fit the spring and then I'll be able to refit it back to the vehicle. So if you look here, there's a hole and then obviously this part here protrudes up. And then if we look at the rubber, we've got the protruding part and then obviously the indentation here. 
Let's just line it up like so. All I'm doing now is fitting the bump stop, the protective casing, the spring, the spring turret, and then obviously the bearing at the top. It's a case of then fitting the washers and then clamping everything down. And then finally I will replace the dust cap. And when I stripped down the suspension, I noticed that this um, drop link is broken here. So I've ordered a new one. So we'll get that fitted. So we'll just push down on the hub and then try and get this part of the shock absorber into this hole in the hub here. And then what we'll do now is we'll push up, turn this round so the slot's in the right position. And then push it up. Like so. Now, if you find that you can't get the hub or the knuckle up into the right position, what you can actually do is you can actually put a trolley jack underneath the wishbone here and push up. As long as everything's lined up in there, you should be able to push that up. But obviously don't force it. And if it's still a bit sticky, you can go into the back here. There's a slot here. Just try and open that there slightly with a wedge and then you can even try sanding down with some emery paper just uh, the inside here and also the shock absorber itself because sometimes you'll get a lot of corrosion and dirt and what have you build up there and it will make it quite hard for the suspension strut to slot into the, 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 the hub here. What I'll do now is I'll check the, the camber. So this is a camber tool, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll make sure this bubble's in the centre when the, it's on the hub like so. And then what we want to be doing then is checking for the positive camber. So the bubble's in the centre there, and then if you look here, it's in between the 1 and the 1.5 Right, so this, this side is actually in between the 1.1 1. Uh, 1 and the 2 I'm on the side that was previously damaged and as you can see it's in between the 1 and the 2 so This is the side that was damaged, now obviously I've replaced the suspension strut and now that I've proven that it was only the suspension strut that was causing the negative camber that we previously had. So I'm ha really happy with that now. So all I need to do is get the steering adjusted, the tracking adjusted, and then that way it won't uh, chew any tires. That's all the mechanical parts repaired. And that's it guys, thanks very much for watching. Take care.